there's this thing that monk said, Thelonious Monk, or supposedly, whereas if you play a wrong note, you know, make it right by doing it again and sitting there for a while. <laughs> uh, welcome to Leo New Moon 2019 Transmission Part 2 with your host and celestial navigator, Gemini Brett of Arts of the Chart, GeminiBrett.com. Some of you have been watching this live on Facebook, and it's marathon style right now. We're going long. Um, and if you're still here, well, you dig that. Cool. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, this will be part two. The first part, which I would encourage you to watch first, is much more about the Leo archetype and aligning ourselves archetypally. And in this part two, we will get into the arts of the chart and um, dig this thing astrologically. And so... You know, we want to make sure on two levels, right? As above, so below, as within, so without, and such. Um, there's your chart, there's your natal chart. And in that exploration, well, how does this 8 degrees, 36 minutes Leo meeting of moon and sun to plant the new moon seed of 2019, how does it align in your nativity? Are you Aries rising and it's in your fifth sign? Are you Sagittarius rising and it's in your ninth? Are you Aquarius rising and it's in your seventh house, right? Are you um, nine degrees Scorpio moon and therefore this new moon very strongly squares uh, the moon of your nativity, et cetera, right? So bringing like the global thing um, into, sorry, I'm just realizing I might want to push this button bringing the global thing into personal to help you align your own shape and that there's going to be other questions that we astrologers will ask well what's your age what are the significant perfections um progressions transits that are alive for you how does this leo new moon kind of spark that or um, catalyze those things that have been going on or beginning now etc right on a whole nother level, literally, whole, right? Because you personally, that's particular, right? On a whole nother level, just what's the world chart doing? What does this mean for the world? And how do we align ourselves to that, right? So that's what we'll wrap about a bit today. So let me grab a little pointer thing. Although, you know, actually, Astro Gold Software. Thank you, Astro Gold Software, for setting me up with this beautiful thing. Does a wonderful job of like showing a little circle if I just find patience. But this thing will actually help me show some of the aspects and whatnot better. Astro Gold also offers a really wonderful mapping experience, what I love, which I love. I want to um, show an interesting thing here. I've been getting more and more into uh, maps uh, and looking at this moment, you know and kind of where are some of the most powerful expresses places, if you will, that it, that it will express on earth. Um, so like the Leo new moon is rising um, at the time that the, that the new moon forms, it will be rising in these places. We see Poland, Romania, Bulgaria, Turkey. Um, interestingly, the Holy land, if you will. And, um, this all to the right of these lines will have the new moon in the 12th house of hidden things and mysteries and all sorts of other things. We can be careful with that. But if you're in Cairo or Giza, like literally at the Great Pyramid, this new moon will be rising as it forms. Which interests me because I'm just planning a trip there. Um, Ethiopia, Somalia, these are all places, Madagascar, um, and not... And also west of these lines, uh, the new moon will be in the first house, but these are the places on earth where, where it literally will be rising as it forms. New moon, why aren't the moon and the sun in the same exact curve? Well, it depends if I'm looking zodiacal in Mundo. That's another conversation for another time. Um, I'm very excited to go to Greece where this new moon is rising um, on August 6th, I will be presenting about astrocartography and location techniques there. So that's fun. Um, the Newman will be culminating in these places in Russia and um, Mongolia, China, down through Australia, Uluru. So this will be midday new moon alignment in those places. Anti-culminating or the middle of the night in Brazil. 
which interests me, especially given the political climb over there right now. And this is where the um, new moon will align when it's sunset, and that includes actually California, where I'm currently sitting in San Anselmo. So we can get into all that stuff much more another time. It's one of my favorite things to do is to help people um, see that not only the signs and the shapes and the houses and such of their nativity say so much, but that there's actual places on earth where a lot of these things can really come alive. You know, so I can show you that Mars, for example, during this Leo new moon, this is the Mars rising line is moving through Sweden, Ukraine, as you can see, but Turkey, and then into Iraq, black moon Lilith, descending line moving through Iran. Um, and of course, there's some interesting political energetic happening over there right now. I like seeing that Egypt and Giza are right between the Venus rising and the new moon <laughs> rising lines, as I literally am. Um, as soon I think as Mercury stations direct, going to make some plans to head over to that space. Um, so I think I'll leave that there for now. And thank you, Astro Gold, for letting me map. And I hope all of that actually just showed up. I'm just thinking that that might not have shown up on this Zoom video. Well, so that being said, let me. Um, let me see about that. Yeah. I probably just pointed out a bunch of things on the map that you didn't get to see, and that just seemed like a technological in conjunct, which is an interesting theme we might get back to. Um, so let me show then what I had shown just in brief is that on this map, um, we can find places in this moment's time of the Leo new moon of 2019, July 31st or August 1st, depending on where you are, that these curves show where the new moon will be rising in the moment that it forms when moon meets sun. These places show where moon will be, new moon will be culminating. These places show where the new moon will be anti-culminating, where it will be the middle of the night at the time of the new moon, at the roots of the chart, the imum jelly, the bottom of the heavens. And these are the places where the moon new moon will be setting sunset in the moment that moon meets sun and then i'll bring in some of these other planetary beings and um i think i'll just zoom out and so people can have that chart to play with if you'd like it's a lot to see learning how to read the astro cartography is a whole another level of the craft that's been one of my personal play spaces lately and something that i really 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 love to do for people in session to bring to them to some of their power places or places of personal initiation. And it works on a global level too for a significant happening like a new moon, eclipse, etc. Well, we can see some of the places it's most going to activate in the world and we find in mundane study that there's truth here. Okay, I mentioned earlier in the part one of this that this new moon is relatively opposite to Black Moon Lilith. This is true Black Moon Lilith which if we look through Lilith, we find the place where moon is furthest from earth and therefore smallest, slowest, dimmest, etc. And that means opposite Lilith, we find what's called the lunar perigee, the moon's closest approach to earth where moon is biggest, fastest, brightest. And so this is a very big moon, but we won't see because a new moon is more like a no moon, isn't it? Right? Under the beams, hidden from our view. So sometimes when moon meets the sun, we have a solar eclipse, right? And that is not the case for this Leo new moon of 2019. It was the case on July 2nd, 2019. The Cancer new moon was a total lunar, total solar eclipse followed on July 16th, 2019 by a partial lunar eclipse, total solar eclipse in Cancer, partial lunar eclipse in Capricorn. As I'm recording this today, a couple of days before the July 31st, 2019 Leo new moon, I'm still in the Cancer moon. We're still in the eclipse cauldron. And those eclipses of July are the prenatal eclipses for the next six months, right? We'll have our next eclipse season in December of 2019. And so they're very important seeds that kind of carry out through at least six months time. There's a lot of debate about how long eclipses last for, but understand that it's alive now. And they've been powerful times and we've seen a lot. All right, so 
Interestingly, in this Leo new moon, well, I'm seeing Mercury retrograde. I forgot, I thought Mercury was going to station direct um, like an hour before this new moon, but it looks like I have that backwards or retrograde. And let me make sure I'm sharing, I'm gonna share intrepid astrology software, which lets me do some playful things easily. Like um, here's the Leo new moon chart with some asteroids here we see Juno with Mars, there's Pallas Athena in Libra opposite Eris and Aries on a square with retrograde Mercury in the North Lunar Node opposite this Cancer crew of Saturn, K2, and Pluto, for example. Um, Chiron and, and Aries, who will show up on my other chart. Uh, Vesta in Taurus square Juno and Mars is an interesting signature and in trying to these Capricorn beings wedge with the cancer crew right obviously i'm speaking pretty high-tech astrology here and i'm not necessarily going to say what all of that means because um or what i feel it means because there's only so much time in a day so i think we'll play um probably though i feel are so significant without those what we typically see as the principal asteroid goddesses today um so Mercury retrograde, I can tell because in both of these softwares, the red numbers mean retrograde. And so Intrepid beautifully just kind of lets me say, all right, Mercury, station direct. And um, the new moon in Washington, D.C., where I have this chart cast for is 11, 11 p.m. Mercury station is direct at 11.57 p.m. So that's a pretty interesting thing that Mercury is stationing direct in the sign of Cancer opposite Pluto, okay? Mercury aligned to Pluto and came back to oppose Pluto and he won't get fully back in alignment again, but it's pretty strong. And this is what Mercury slowing down, stopping, and you know, in, in ancient transmission here is, is phasis, a, a phase change. And there's an old suggestion that a planet, when it changes phase like this, it saturates the chart. And so the Cancer Mercury theme becomes very significant. And it's, I think, it's more powerful. I was wrong about this in my moon group. Um, and you know, I shared something about that in part one, but I wanna share that here in part two, because this super long now, almost two hour transmission about the Leon and Moon is just uh, in a sense being presented because um, I meant to share a recording of the transmission at my Moon group with Anna this week in Berkeley. And um, the recording didn't sort out, right? So say what you will about retrogrades and all that. I don't know why my camera is missing here, but it doesn't matter so much. Astrology is not a way out. Astrology is a way in. Let's begin. You find that here at GeminiBrett.com where you also find, oh, work with me links if you want to do a session and I would love that or courses um, kind of soon to come. But right now you can do oh, like six to 12 hours of free sacred astronomy training there if you'd like. Um, events and there's a lot more that need to be posted free teachings but here's berkeley moon gathering so if you're in the bay area on fridays um, shortly before each new moon new moon we will meet in circle and uh, guided meditations and astrology transmissions and sharing and support circle and gentle embodiment practices with your host and celestial navigators me gemini brett and scorpiana an amazing partner and hopefully you so if you're in the bay i hope you'll plan to come through to these moon gatherings find out more about them at gemini and uh, eventually i'm going to be sharing the very short astrological transmissions that i give at these moon gatherings for probably 15 20 25 minutes i think that's what we did last week um because, you know, when we astrologize, we can just get carried away and it can go forever. And some of you have been watching this transmission forever. Pats yourself on the back. <laughs> All right. And I appreciate your support and participation. All right. So in part one, I really spoke a lot about what I feel the Leo archetype 
is and is not and how we can realign um, ourselves and our intentions in this opportunity. And here I'm going like much more hardcore astrology and um, not afraid to because you were warned. That's the gig. All right, so Leo New Moon. I just want to get, um, I am talking Leo New Moon. Let me get my camera back up here. Because I'm worried just in that I'm not seeing it, that maybe the broadcast isn't working right or something like that. And maybe it just doesn't matter. I'm going to try a few other things real quick. Huh. Yeah. Camera is just like gone. But seems like things are happening. So cool. We'll just look at um, the chart together. Right. So I was just speaking about how Mercury is still retrograde for like another 40 something minutes. At the time of this new moon, Mercury stations retrograde for about three weeks, three times a year. And this recent retrograde actually started with Mercury in uh, Leo, very close to where Venus is now. In fact, Mercury and Mars were gathered there together. And uh, Mercury since retrograded back into Cancer, as you can see. Mercury's retrogrades for this year of 2019 are mostly in the water signs. In fact, all of the uh, previous... Uh, Pisces retrograde was all Pisces the coming November retrograde for Mercury which will feature a Mercury transit on November 11th 2019 will all be in Scorpio so this one touched a bit of Leo fire and then brought it back into the water but the beautiful thing here is we can see Mercury with the north node in, in Cancer we can see Mercury retrograding applying to trying Pisces that won't perfect because Mercury again stations direct shortly after this new moon opposite Pluto here Mercury is remembering to bring our consciousness Mercury to the heart to the feelings but also to the family and the home and the safety so the thing the truth is we can't have a reminder that we are creator and we can make what we want we can do what we want and we are here to paint the um, canvas of our life that we are meant to live life as art these are all leo commandments we cannot do that if we didn't feel safe <laughs> at home and we can trust right this is the purpose of cancer and cancer when we I actually can do this, we access the dream. And this is shown a little bit, very strong in the North Node in Cancer and Neptune in Pisces, retrograde applying back there. Um, though this won't happen because the node will move faster, but um, th this alignment, I think it speaks of a place where remembering when we can feel safe and trust and home and shelter, then we can really rest. This comes through First, like knowing who we are, knowing that we have needs and that's okay and learning to express those needs so we can receive, come home, feel safe, lay down, sleep, rest, return to the dream of oneness. And this reminds us that we indeed have the gift of creativity and creation, right? So a lot of this Mercury retrograde and Cancer will say, okay, well, what's this last month been about in this total solar eclipse and Cancer? And what's this life been about? And especially where you didn't receive nurturing, where you felt disconnected from that, when you never felt safe, when you couldn't trust, when you were abandoned, when you were betrayed and such, and especially with Mercury opposite Pluto, very powerful initiations in that regard. Mercury trying Pisces and Neptune. How, you know, were those delusions? How have you lost them in your dreams? How have you suppressed these things to the subconscious territories? But also permission for powerful healing of these depths to return to your true flame and your inner mounted flame, the roaring flame of creation, okay? So, you know, things I will say about that, and it's difficult, but look in the world without us in a time where we find families being separated at the border here in the United States, and that's not something that doesn't happen in other places in the world, and we feel, you know, fine, and, and this is difficult to say, but look, it has been, in, you know, in the zeitgeist and even, you know, political figures being called out for active participation in the sex trade and... Um, pedophile and fucking islands and all, you know, I don't even get into all that shit, 
but it's alive right now, right? What are we doing to corrupt the very important like consciousness of family and tribe and home and safety? And let's think about the children, right? It's a very important thing, not only for cancer family, but for Leo, like children in one regards, okay? So that's a place I think in the world without that can help us reflect on our own world within to say, oh, well, are there like some traumatic experiences on, um, on the inside? Is there some clean up on aisle self? Because as again, as I said in the first uh, part of this transmission, Leo, fix yourself to fix the world, right? So when we clean up our own traumas and there's a lot to be said about that with this Venus and moon sun and Leo in its strong square to Uranus and Taurus. We're speaking about traumas in the body. We're speaking about um, traumas around beauty and sensuality and the revelations that can come through the tension of such alignments to bring activations and openings and there's a beautiful opportunity for this in this time, okay? Because what we'll see is this new moon, and with Venus especially, that square to Uranus really sparking electric activations. I will say very specifically, again, about the traumatic experiences that will keep you from knowing your inner beauty and your safety and your senses and that it's okay to be in your body. That opens a window for you to be a creative being who paints the canvas of your life's experience and lives your life as art. That this trine of the new moon and especially Venus back to Chiron here in um, Aries says, oh, right, there's deep healing. There's like master teachings by alchemizing that lead of the wound of self and that spark of self, Aries, into its gold so the fire can roar in its, in its flame and radiance, Leo. And from that roaring flame, the smoke of Sagittarius, where we find Jupiter at this time, can fully explore, tra travel far and wide, and take its own path to the heavens. And that smoke, of course, carries the spark that keeps the fire trine complete. And we see, you know, it's loose, right? I will say that the moon is going to very quickly apply like the first um, aspect that moon will make after the new moon is after her conjunction with sun moon will trine Jupiter and then she will carry the light of that Jupiter trine to Mars by conjunction. By the way, August 1st, when moon trines Jupiter, Leo moon trine Sagittarius Jupiter, um, and I'll just say a time, I'm really working with 10, no, 11, 8, no, 10, 30 a.m. Pacific time on August 1st, where, where I am, Libra will be on the rise. Uh, I think it's a really powerful electional to kind of do things. Those of you on my mailing list, and I hope you'll be on my mailing list, you can sign up at GeminiBrett.com. You'll probably be seeing something shortly after that time from me um, to announce some exciting things that are coming up in a bunch of uh, free and also paid webinars as well. All right. So this fire trine's complete. Now, you know, is it out of orb? The new moon at only eight and a half Leo, and here's Jupiter all the way up at 1440? No. I mean, first of all, it's only six degrees, all right? Mars also kind of harnesses Jupiter back in here. Mars is separating from that Jupiter trine, which was activated some time before this, but the moon will carry the light of Jupiter to Mars and keep them engaged. And I think this is a wonderful thing. And we're going to speak more about Mars's role in this regard, especially in the Yod or the um, finger of God, as it's called, between Saturn and the Capricorn crew and Pisces Neptune pointing to Leo Mars here. You can see the shape that I'm tracing. But first, let me just say that this incredible truth of the Leo new moon being held by Venus and Mars, Venus, circle of spirit over cross of matter. The, 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 the more beautiful glyph for Mars, I'll say the older glyph, is the cross of matter over the circle of spirit. I see Venus as our inhale, breathing spirit into matter, and Mars as the exhale, wind balance self back into spirit. And so much of the, the fire quests, especially in the Aries and Leo realms, are about that. So I talked about the stasis of Mercury changing phase by um, stationing from retrograde in Cancer opposite Pluto to direct like within an hour of this Leo new moon, but also in this past moon, this um, Cancer total solar eclipse lunation, um, both Venus has gone under the beams as a morning star and Mars as an evening star and changed phase in that 
kind of visibility regard. And they're said to saturate the chart. And there's something about the sacred marriage going on here with always when moon meets sun, but also in Venus and Mars. They're scheduled to have a conjunction this month um, in the sign of Virgo, I want to show you when that is. I can just kind of more easily rock that by going here in Astro Gold. I want to show that Venus will conjoin the sun. She will align behind the sun from Earth's point of view on August 14th in Washington, D.C. time. Anyway, it's August 13th here in California where I set 21 degrees Leo. That is the midpoint of a journey with Venus that began when she conjoined the sun in the sign of Scorpio here at three degrees on October 26, 2018. A Scorpio seed was planted for Venus to explore a 19-month cycle, 584 days. Powerful chart. I will be speaking at length about this chart and this chart of Venus Kazemi exterior, interior, retrograde Venus between Earth and Sun, exterior, Venus on the opposite side of the sun, I'll be doing on August 6, 2019, uh, Thursday, um, a Cosmic Intelligence Agency Venus webinar with Ariel Gutman, Adam Gainsberg, who both wrote incredible Venus books, and Yulia Simas. And we're going to, as we have three times already, get into Venus star point transmissions. Find out more about that at cosmicintelligenceagency.com. The previous three have been amazing. One thing I'm going to share is how this Scorpio quest is now called to being initiated in the Leo realms. And that's maybe opposite of how we would usually think of those archetypes. And very importantly, how Mercury and Jupiter and Scorpio at the time of the Venus Scorpio seed being planted were um, in a T-square with this Taurus moon and Aquarius Mars all pointing not only to Mar where Mars is for the new moon, but all pointing to the exterior conjunction of Venus and Leo. And also look at this time. Here's this Leo Mercury back to where he stationed retrograde recently and Taurus, Uranus and Taurus and Aquarius moon, all T square and will be completed in Grand Cross if we honor that this is where Venus had a Scorpio seed. So Venus is in a Scorpio cycle, a Scorpio opposite Taurus Uranus Taurus cycle with a Taurus moon squaring an Aquarius Mars cycle. And really we are talking about freedom in our emotional expression to return to our power by engaging with the, um, traumas of the body all right and so we're going to see that in the world without of a without and the more we clean that on the world within the more we provide a space for the world outside of us to itself be more authentic in its emotional experience and expression so that we don't have to trap these things in the body or collect our traumas like baseball cards or forms commandments on the arc of our soul ideas of you know personal identity, but rather can express and shifting again from serving the suppressed to control me, to controlling the expressed to serve me. That's the beauty of the fixed sign, which for me is not stubborn. It's about learning that power and that control for personal empowerment and that magical expression. So, and the church bells ring across the valley. So this uh, Leo Venus Kazemi on August 14th, there will then be Venus conjoined Mars in the sign of Virgo under the beams on August 24th in this lunation before the Virgo new moon. And also Sun conjoined Mars. I might as well show the chart. On September 2nd, 2019, that's after Virgo new moon. Okay. But we're talking about this Leo new moon cycle. That's for next time. This Leo new moon cycle does indeed feature, and I'll just show Leo new moon, Scorpio first quarter moon, Aquarius full moon, Gemini third quarter moon. And I spoke about this in part one of this 2019 Leo new moon transition, transmission. Um, but this lunation again does feature an 
exterior Venus Kazemi in the sign of Leo. And this is the resurrection of Anana, queen of heaven and earth, who's descended into the underworld and will, in a sense, have her death and rebirth moment, but in the light of Leo. And this cycle also does feature the Venus-Mars conjunction and the sign of Virgo, but under the beams. And I'll look forward to sharing more about that in the Cosmic Intelligence Agency webinar and also speaking about Anana on the cross and why these crosses have fixed signs, both at the Venus interior, Kazemi, that began the cycle on October 26, 2018, in Scorpio, and the exterior, Kazemi and Leo, um, really speaks about how we, in this intent of fix yourself to fix the world, fix signs, need to shift from some idea that this is about stubbornness or vanity and coming into our personal empowerment. And Venus is leading us here. And one thing she's saying with this exterior Kazemi in Leo of a Scorpio cycle is, look, your initiations don't have to be so like death and rebirth. It doesn't have to be so traumatic, right? This is a place to grow and we can grow from bliss as much as we can grow from pain. It's just about not turning off in the times of beauty. And that might sound wrong and maybe it is, but I don't think so. And I think Leo reminds us this, we are here to paint the canvas of our life's experience. And if we take responsibility and honor the powerful traumas, beauties, passions, pleasures, mistakes, if that's a thing, right, of the past, then we will, in a sense, open our palette into a more richer um, opportunity to paint the present and the future in an empowered way. We have to do that without losing the ground, okay? If we completely disconnect from Earth, right, then how can we truly choose to be creators of our earthly experience? And so there's this beautiful thing about the Uranus now in Taurus, this heavenly energy down to earth and the sensual places in the square with Leo. It's saying that. Don't fly off into your inspirational fire without understanding that fire is meant to come here so the wood, the earth, the body can find that spiritual um, fire. I tried to find a word that was more poetic and not be redundant, but see, this is important. Express communicate, create, and don't get down on yourself by or hesitate to speak your truth and let it flow. Yo, all right. Capricorn, a lot of beings in Capricorn here. Saturn, retrograde, Pluto, retrograde around the node. Saturn traveling with the south lunar node, K2, and Capricorn for months, like almost seemingly impossible. And of course, we're charging up for a Saturn-Pluto conjunction in Capricorn in early 2020, a, a Jupiter-Pluto conjunction mid-2020, and then eventually a Saturn uh, and Jupiter conjoining in the sign of Aquarius in the first degree, but they're kind of be camping out there, and you'll hear astrologers speak about this forever. I want to say very importantly at this time of this new moon, and actually let me just shift over... Um, Grid, right, so hopefully you're seeing that. Let me just make sure that's true. Yeah, that seems to be happening. Um, so these are, many of these strong aspects are alignments, but I wanna point out as well, all of these parallels and contra-parallels at this time. Without getting too much into that, specifically I wanna point you to um, Jupiter parallel Saturn, okay? seven minutes from an exact parallel. Jupiter parallel Pluto, two minutes from an exact parallel. And that means Saturn, Pluto, four minutes. And they're both parallel, contrapolar, they're aligned to the nodes. Okay, so what the hell does that mean? The most simple embodied Earth expression, I can say this, if you go outside tonight, you won't see Jupiter or Saturn rise because they're rising before sunset, okay? But they are rising in the exact same place on the horizon, first Jupiter, then Saturn, okay? What you can see is where they culminate. Jupiter will culminate 
and that's due south for the northern hemisphere, due north for the southern hemisphere, either way in the tropics, and it's directly overhead for about 22 degrees south latitude, um, that Jupiter and Saturn will culminate at the exact same height, first Jupiter, then Saturn, then Pluto, but you won't see Pluto doing this. Then they will set in the exact same place on the southwestern horizon before the sun rises. And I'm planning personally to get up super early to drive to the ocean and to watch that happening, to watch Jupiter's set, to align some stones between myself and that place on the horizon, and then watch Saturn go right there. This is a very important thing. This is a parallel, okay, which is like a conjunction, but out of time. Jupiter rises, Saturn and Pluto follow in Jupiter's wake. And one thing I've been saying about this since January this year, where I've really been talking about, look, we're all talking about Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto conjunction in 2020, and that's cool, but they won't all align perfectly. And at this time of the Leo new moon, they are very significantly conjoined by declination. This is a parallel. And what I will suggest is that it's, in a sense, opening an ultrasound <laughs> so that we can see the, um, the child that will be born um, through the triple conjunction or near triple conjunction in the year 2020. What do I mean by that? Whatever it is for you, whatever it is for your world that is happening now, there's things in January, there's things in September, but especially in this July of 2019 lunation that begins, I'm sorry, August 2019 lunation that begins with the July 31st or the August 1st Leo new moon of 2019, depending on where you are, you are going to see images of the thing that will manifest in the very strong astrological alignments of the year 2020. And if you don't like what you see, you are being invited to shift. If you like what you see, you are being invited to rehearse, promote, <laughs> yeah? So just dig that. This Leo lunation, August 1st, 2019, or July 31st, 2019, Leo new moon, for the 29 and a half days to come, the Leo lunation of 2019, is of many things, it is clearing personal trauma, traumas to the body, sexual trauma, traumas regarding family and um, culture and country and tribe, finding your own personal empowerment, remembering that you are the creator of your life's experience, keeping our feet on the ground, but allowing ourselves to dream, to channel that energy into the manifest reality, okay? And, this month, you will receive an ultrasound, a vision into your astrological child that will be born, that the, the creations that you will birth into your reality in the very powerful alignments of 2020, where we are speaking about Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter, Pluto, Jupiter, Saturn. And you hear a lot of astrologers speak about that. You won't hear many of them say, right now, this time, Make sure you are aligned. Make sure you are listening. Make sure you are witnessing. This is a time where literally you will see some threads of the future. And if you do not like what you see, course correct. And if you like what you see, keep it up. You feel that? So most important thing I can say today, I think that's going to get split into a little mini movie to share for those of you who prefer brevity. <laughs> and so that being said, I'm Gemini Brett. Thanks for checking that out. GeminiBrett.com. Let's do a session. That's how I eat and it's how I thrive. And it's my passion to share and teach and uh, astrologically consult as well. All right. So a couple more things about this chart before I give my voice a breath before consultation time opens again around here. Um, is that this yod, I wanna, I wanna really point it out to you, so let me do this.
first we're just going to go here and uh in my settings you know actually let me do this bring we'll bring pluto in and that will help us see the so-called finger of god structure to quincunxes with planets that are on the sextile pointing to an invisible place for them in this case to mars i'll bring the nodes in they're very much part of this scene this shape is fascinating and because Mars in Leo is cohabiting, we can say especially with Sun, who has so much Leo resonance, and there's the new moon and Venus on the scene too, this is pointing to that creative essence, that Leo essence. And traditionally, we would say, certainly, that Saturn has strength in Capricorn, and in modern times, Neptune in Pisces, all right? And Sun in Leo, isn't it, right? So let me bring in Jupiter in Sagittarius as well, to complete the scene of beings who we say are in signs that they rule. From a traditional point of view, Pisces, also Jupiter. Now this Jupiter-Neptune square, Sagittarius-Pisces, seeking, believing, is about encountering and looking at honestly and reframing if required your belief systems. And here's the Here's the real thing about a belief system. If you got it, you don't know that you do. Pay attention to the reflections and your relationships and your experience with others, and especially in self, the things that make you furious, fiery, hot, or the things that make you wish to just check out and get out of the world. These are hints. They will smell like these systems I'm speaking about where you have an opportunity now to deeply course correct. This is part of how you will align to your own personal superpowers to claim that paintbrush of creating your own life's experience. The wisdom of the tribe and the crazy power reality of, of government police to that scene to help you remember that we have been disconnected from the wise elders of the tribe who have their ears to the voice of earth and who are here to teach us how to do this. The amazing power of dream truth and, and compassionate collective consciousness and unity slash absolute delusions and choosing I would rather just check out and smoke this or drink that to like not have to deal with this fucking crazy place. At least part of my language and don't. This yod, yod, the so-called finger of God, toe of the goddess, <laughs> uh, is pointing to Mars. And all of the Leo beings are tied in, in this regard, especially the moon, who, and Venus, well, especially the moon, who will catch up to Mars in the sign of Leo. Venus will catch Mars in Virgo, as will the sun, as I showed earlier. Quincunx aspects traditionally are known not to be aspects at all. Aspect means to see, and there is a 150 degree blind spot according to the ancient tradition, and this is true in our nature as well, because our eyes have lacunas at 150 degrees. So what? <laughs> so when we learn to see into the invisible places, we are developing like an extrasensory, psychic, sixth sense, use whatever you will. This is alive in this quincunx at this time. But it can only be activated by, here's retrograde Pisces, remembering you are a dreamer without getting lost in the dream because we have to keep our feet on the ground, Capricorn. And we will do this by listening to the wise elders, to return to our power by listening to the true voice of the earth, okay? And this all points to a very active force, Leo Mars, who's benefiting, we should say, from according to the traditional rules, by cohabiting the sign of Leo with the sun, and the moon who will carry the light of the sun to Mars, but not until first seeing Jupiter by trine. And this is a very important thing, because this shape, let me show this to you. It's a little easier to see if I ask some of the host to take a break. This shape here, which 
it could be called like a quincunx wedge. It's the sound. <laughs> oh, wait, you know what? Sorry, I'm showing the wrong shape. I want to show this. Okay, great. Square quincunx trine. Musically, it's the minor or the major triad, depending on where you start. And very importantly, Jupiter, who can see both Pisces and Leo from the sign of Sagittarius, is helping Neptune in Pisces and Mars and Leo see one another. He can play a, a mediator. He can play the introductory role. And this will bring, especially because of the parallel that I mentioned before, it will bring Saturn into the scene and Saturn will bring K2, the nodes, and Pluto along. So what? What does it mean? If we can face our own belief systems in such a way that will clear us out of the delusion that our crazy culture has forced but not allowing us to listen to the wisdom of earth. And much of this is shown, frankly, and this is challenging for us to hear, I think, shown by the way that we disrespect our elders. In our culture, we told to put those people in the home and they go, you know, dementia style. That's a lot of the, the Neptune retrograde in Pisces is reminding us that if we treat our elders like baggage, why would they not lose their minds? Because how difficult is that to face? Again, Mercury retrograde and Cancer opposite Pluto and Capricorn. Do you want me to go easy? The heavenly harmonies don't. Venus and the new moon and Leo square, Uranus, Taurus, right? I mean, traumas in the body, traumas to the earth perpetuated by false royalty. You want me to go easy? Heavenly harmonies don't. If I truly want to be a terrestrial narrator <laughs> for the celestial symphony, should I just run away and say it's all light and we're ascending to the 5D or should I say, hey, here's where the work is? And what I hear, here's where the work is. We have been set up in these cultural belief systems that have disconnected not only from our elders who are alive, but our elders who are not, our ancestors, to our tribal awareness and consciousness, right? So this idea of colonialism, genocides, the destruction of native people, of native land, not listening to them, Calling things like astrology or spirit traditions in general, archaic idiocy, who have been replaced, fortunately, by the great god science. We're fucking up, y'all. And we can look around and feel the temperature. It's hot, too hot. It's too cold. What's going on? And listen to the elders. Mars is receiving this strength, this psychic strength, this empowerment of the Leo principle of true honor, of true courage, of radiance, of painting life's canvas from the Capricorn crew who says, get in touch with your roots, and Neptune in Pisces who says, remember the dream and now bring it through the fire into reality, bring it down to earth, stay grounded, be a grounded dreamer and send that into your own personal awakening. But to do this, two things. One, look at your belief systems. Reconnect to the ancestors. So let me start with that ladder first. Reconnect to the ancestors. Who are they? Saturn, retrograde, Capricorn, traveling with the south lunar node and Pluto. This is bring out your dead. In some levels, that's the skeletons in your scary closet, and okay, do your work. Look at your traumas. Look at those that you've traumatized. Come back into safety. Many things that I've wrapped about earlier, right? And if you're listening to a shorter version of this, tune into Leo New Moon 2019 Part 1 and Part 2, which will also be on YouTube.
bring out the dead. And I mean, reconnect to your lineage. We have to process some of that, right? Privileged white male, colonialist culture. That is my inheritance. But it wasn't too long ago that it was my people, the shamanic people that I and my ancestry and related to and connecting to, stone circle builders, astronomical alignment <laughs> celebrators, astrologers, astronomers in the sacred way, right? The people I channel from my heritage, it is not that long ago that they too suffered the blade of genocide. And for me to clear some of my guilt, for the people between them and me, and not to point fingers in blame and shame alone because that does not open the gateway of healing and realignment and reconnection and beauty and empowered creation, but not to avoid that either, right? Honor, honesty, courage, and reconnecting to the dream. I'm gonna have to look for this real quick, but I do wanna read um, a very, I think, important prophecy. who is spoken by, as I like to call him, cra sane horse, crazy horse, <clears throat> who, you know, said this very sad thing, <laughs> this very, very beautiful thing. What's sad about it is he was murdered by those who he said it to, and it sounds like he knew this is the way it was going to be in a time of treachery and distrust. But I think it's a very important thing for us all to hear right now. Upon suffering beyond suffering, the red nation shall rise again, and it shall be a blessing for a sick world, a world filled with broken promises, selfishness, and separations, a world longing for light again. I see a time of seven generations when all the colors of mankind will gather under the sacred tree of life, and the whole earth will become one circle again. In that day, there will be those among the Lakota who will carry knowledge and understanding of unity among all living things. And the young white ones will come to those of my people and ask for this wisdom. I salute the light within your eyes where the whole universe dwells. For when you are at that center within you, and I am in that place within me, we shall be as one. A world longing for light again, he says. And then he says, I salute the light within your eyes where the whole universe dwells. For when you are at that center within you and I am in that place within me, we shall be as one. So how do we bring more light? By remembering the light here, here. By sparking and igniting and fixing the flame so it doesn't rage out of control, but instead becomes that roaring, dancing, inner-mounted flame that lights the way so we can party to our passionate play all night. Leo, okay? But we have to look at these belief systems. And I come from a culture that says astrology is nonsense and that says, oh, in a very powerful, particular example, from not long ago, oh sure, that's your land and I hear your prophecies about the black snake, but you know, we need to build an oil um, pipeline here. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, what you're saying about the polluting the waters and how we're all gonna die, but you know, the science, especially the you know, corporate funded science says that that's not a thing, so, you know, sorry, right? What do you guys know? This is science right? 
and genocide in these people who were beat if they spoke their language or remembered their ways, and we beat ourselves in that. Yeah? And in Hawaii right now, yeah, as I'm speaking on July 29th, 2019, a very important happening. We are Mauna Kea, a movement that was certainly alive in, in 2014 and 2015, who have basically rallied around, and it's much more than this, right? Because this is about not only honoring the true people, the first people of a land, so I can speak about that where I sit, who we call Native Americans, I can speak about that in Australia, who they fascinatingly call aboriginals, which means not original, but they are the original. That seems like a little conscious corruption in the matrix of so-called reality, doesn't it? I could look in Hawaii and look at the true Hawaiian people. And so really this is about returning to the voice of the earth, the wisdom of the earth. Crazy Horace said, I see a time of seven generations, and by the way, that's now, when all the colors of mankind, and let's say humankind, and let's say earth kind, will gather under the sacred tree of life and the whole earth will become one circle again. In that day, there will be many among the Lakota who will carry knowledge and understanding of unity among all living things, and the young white ones will come to those of my people and ask for this wisdom. And this is happening. And look, it's not just the young white ones who need to come. I need to come, many of us, we all do. But there are people of all color who need to come back to the old ways. Does this mean we destroy our computers and the smartphone, you know? Not necessarily, but what are we willing to give up? It certainly means I think that we need to believe some belief, to destroy some belief systems, to compost those into rich soil to plant seeds of honor. And a good belief system is good because you don't know you have it. So listen. In the world out here, if we choose not to run away from its pain and the scary reflections on that screen, say, listen to the elder tradition. And it's not, of course, only the Lakota who carry this wisdom and the Lakota too. Unfortunately, despite suffering upon suffering, the elders and the wisdom is not being completely destroyed and it can't be because it is it is the earth's language and we can all learn to hear this and what will be taught by by Lakota and what will be taught by Shipibo and what we will be taught by Hawaiian what we will be taught by Maya and Toltec and is to listen to our ancestors and they will say to me and I've heard this don't listen to my ancestor listen to your ancestor Brett and I say well, who are they and then there's the, like the shame thing that comes into the thread. And yet I can honor that and the place that they have gone and speak to me from, it's not a place of colonialist land ownership reality, right? It's a place of shamanic earth wisdom support reality and understanding. And this is the Capricorn crew in sextile with Neptune and Pisces, that there's something about this spell, there's something about this dream, there's something about that in reality, there's something about the reality of the dream that will focus now through the force of self and the spirit regarding honor, courage, true, powerful, intentional creation. Remember that you are painting this and don't not, not, <laughs> don't refuse to look at the painting that is telling you your truth. So yes, allow creator to create through you and then allow yourself to be your audience so you can learn from what you see there. So I was speaking about Saturn following Jupiter, Pluto following Saturn, following Jupiter on a parallel path, carving the same arc through the sky. And look, these two beings, I'll talk Jupiter and Saturn, they seem to be completely opposite to one another. They seem to, in fact, be in conflict to one another. Jupiter expansion. Don't you remember? You're an angel being go back. Saturn constriction, the skin of the solar system. Fuck that. Finish the gig. You came to play Earth. You're not getting out of here just like that. 
right? <laughs> They're working together. It is the hot air balloon. Jupiter, the hot air that expands and lifts you. Saturn, the fabric that constricts you or you would go nowhere. The air would just blow out. We have to keep our feet on the ground. And as Hermes says in the tablets, it ascends to the heavens and again it descends to the earth, achieving the force of things above and below. So was the world created. So I've been looking at this, Saturn following in the wake of Jupiter, like Saturn's path smells a lot like Jupiter. And to say, okay, cool, well, here's some spirit injected into reality. Good. But we also have to inject some reality into spirit and also some constriction into expansion. Look, in Hawaii right now, we are Mauna Kea. If you're unaware of this movement, become part of it. Go witness what it is. There are 13 gigantic telescopes on the peak of Mount Kea, which is the largest mountain on Earth, okay, from foot to top, because Everest does not start at sea level as Mount Kea does. And it is the, in a sense, most sacred. And many mountains, all the rivers, the ocean, everything's sacred. It is nature. But this is a very sacred space in Hawaii. And without permission, Telescopes put here. And people ask me, which side am I on? <laughs> Do I like space? Yes. But you know, I'm less about narrowing my point of view by looking far away. I'm more about putting my feet and my back on the ground and receiving, being held by my mother to see sky as Earth does and widening my view, a sacred and older way of astronomy. That's my thing. And so I benefit from telescopes. I'm not saying they shouldn't be, but they certainly shouldn't be on mountains that are sacred and places that humans, mortals, were not even allowed to go. Who, why, by an archaic tradition and we've replaced that fortunately with the God of science? No, by those who understood the way of earth. And you don't contaminate the peaks of your water source. The peaks where the earth marries the heavens. And we can listen right now. And we can listen right now within to the part of us that's like, that's ridiculous. So I've heard say people say like, oh, well, there's telescopes there and they're not even where the people do ceremony anyway. Where, because you're not allowed to go there. <laughs> charged by this, feeling responsible for this, feeling guilty for that, understanding that that guilt is ridiculous, that would keep me from actually painting in my life's canvas. That's not aloha, that's not co-creation, that's not empowered manifestation, but I still should follow those paths of guilt and threads to find the connection to belief systems that are ready to be destroyed so I can access into the superpowers of choosing to paint my life's art. But we have to take responsibility to the traumas in our bodies, to the traumas of our body. And we will be reminded when we go to the wise ones, and the wisest one is Earth herself, but it is important that we find our way to putting our ear to her voice through the teachings of the elders, and they are fortunately everywhere. It is time for us to learn to walk in way of honor. I said this in the part one of this transmission, Leo Seeds, what is keeping you from loving you? Eradicate that, compost that into rich, dark soil to plant new seeds of honorable, courageous, roaring flame self-love that will remind you that you are the creator of your life's experience. Now, who do you want to be? Thank you for spending some time here with me. <clears throat> if you feel like you would give something, would like to give something back besides your presence, which means, by the way, participation for We Are One Circle, uh, you will find a donate button at GeminiBrett.com. And buy me a cup of astrology, you know, I'd love that. 
but the greatest thing I would love um, if you choose to offer some financial support in some way is to check out We Are Mauna Kea and see how you can assist right now. It matters now. If you would like to learn more about the way that I hear these soul songs um, and see how in the particular space of you, you can even further align to the amazing opportunities of this particular Leo new moon or the Cancer total solar eclipse, the previous to now, and the other amazing activations of your heavenly harmonies and your sacred song. Reach out, GeminiBrett.com. And by the way, if you can't find a donate button there and you'd like to give something, head over to morethanastrology.com. It's much more evident. So I'm going to play a little saxophone on the way out. And remember to break out the arts and the instruments this month because, again, the songs, the poems, the dance, the sculpture, the paintings, whatever it be, they're wonderful exercises to remind me that I create my experience. <sighs> Oh, <laughs> 